Transport in India Transport system in India consists of transport by land, water, and air. Public transport remains the primary mode of transport for most Indian citizens, and India's public transport systems are among the most heavily used in the world. Motor vehicle population in India is low as per international standards, with only 24.85 million cars on the nation's roads as per 2013 records. In total, about 21% of households have two wheelers, whereas only 4.7% of households in India have cars slash jeep slash vans as per the 2011 census. Despite this, the number of deaths caused by traffic is amongst the highest in the world and increasing. The automobile industry in India is currently rapidly growing with an annual production of over 4.6 million vehicles, with an annual growth rate of 10.5% and vehicle volume is expected to rise greatly in the future. India's rail network is the third longest and the most heavily used system in the world, transporting 8.225 billion passengers and over 970 million tons of freight annually, as of 2015. The railways transport about 18 million citizens daily. In 2015-16, Government of India, declared 106 National Waterways, NW, under Inland Waterways Authority of India to reduce the cost of transportation and lower the carbon footprint by moving the traffic from surface roads and railroads to waterways. Despite ongoing improvements in the transport sector, several aspects of transportation are still riddled with problems due to outdated infrastructure and lack of investment in less economically active parts of the country. The demand for transport infrastructure and services has been rising by around 10% a year with the current infrastructure being unable to meet these growing demands. According to Goldman Sachs, India will need to spend 1.7 trillion on infrastructure projects over the next decade to boost economic growth. Walking has constituted a major form of transport in ancient times. This mode of transport has always been a first for humans. People used to cover long distances on foot or bullet carts. For instance, Adi Sankaracharya traveled all over India from Kaladi near Kochi. Walking still constitutes an important mode of transport in rural areas. In the city of Mumbai, to further improve the transit conditions for pedestrians, the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority has commenced the construction of more than 50 skywalks, as part of the Mumbai Skywalk project, which is very helpful as walk enthusiasts take part in reducing traffic. Palanquins are also known as palkis or palakis, was one of the luxurious methods primarily used by the rich and noblemen for traveling and also to carry a deity, idol, of a god. Many temples have sculptures of god being carried in a palki. Modern use of the palanquin is limited to Indian weddings, pilgrimage and carrying idols of gods. Bicycles, simply called cycles in India, have ownership rates ranging from around 30% to 75% at the state level. Along with walking, Cycling accounts for 50 to 80 percent of the commuter trips for those in the informal sector in urban areas. However, recent developments suggest that bicycle riding is fast becoming popular in the metro cities of India. Today, government development authorities all over India encourages the setup and use of separate bicycle lanes alongside their roads to combat pollution and ease traffic congestion. Human pulled rickshaws are still available in various cities and villages in the country. Many local governments have proposed a ban on these rickshaws describing them as inhuman. The government of West Bengal proposed a ban on these rickshaws in 2005. Though a bill aiming to address this issue, termed as Calcutta Hackney Carriage Bill, was passed by the West Bengal Assembly in 2006, it has not been implemented yet. The government of West Bengal is working on an amendment to this bill to avoid the loopholes that got exposed when the Hand Pulled Rickshaw Owners Association filed a petition against the bill. Cycle rickshaws were introduced in India in the 1940s. They are bigger than a tricycle where two people sit on an elevated seat at the back and a person pedals from the front. In the late 2000s, they were banned in several cities for causing traffic congestion. The Delhi police recently submitted an affidavit against plying off cycle rickshaws to ease traffic congestion in the city but it was dismissed by the Delhi High Court. In addition, environmentalists have supported the retention of cycle rickshaws as a non-polluting and inexpensive mode of transport. Bullock carts have been traditionally used for transport, especially in rural India. The arrival of the British saw drastic improvements in the horse carriages which were used for transport since early days. Today, they are used in smaller towns and are referred as tanga or buggies. 
Victorias of Mumbai are still used for tourist purposes, but horse carriages are now rarely found in the cities of India. In recent years, cities have banned the movement of slow moving vehicles on the main road. India has been building roads since ancient times, as is evident from the Harappan civilization. As per 2017 estimates, the total road length in India is, making the Indian road network the second largest road network in the world after the United States. At 0.66 km of highway per square kilometer of land the density of India's highway network is higher than that of the United States, 0.65, and far higher than that of China's, 0.16, or Brazil's, 0.20. India has a network of national highways connecting all the major cities and state capitals, forming the economic backbone of the country. As of 2013, India has a total of, of national highways, of which are classified as expressways. As per the National Highways Authority of India, about 65% of freight and 80% passenger traffic is carried by the roads. The national highways carry about 40% of total road traffic though only about 2% of the road network is covered by these roads. Average growth of the number of vehicles has been around 10.16% per annum over recent years. Under National Highways Development Project, NHDP, work is under progress to equip national highways with four lanes, also there is a plan to convert some stretches of these roads to six lanes. All national highways are metalled, but very few are constructed of concrete, the most notable being the Mumbai Pune Expressway. In recent years construction has commenced on a nationwide system of multi-lane highways, including the Golden Quadrilateral and North-South and East-West corridors which link the largest cities in India. In 2000, around 40% of villages in India lacked access to all-weather roads and remained isolated during the monsoon season. To improve rural connectivity, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yoyana, Prime Minister's Rural Road Program, a project funded by the central government with the help of World Bank, was launched in 2000 to build all-weather roads to connect all habitations with a population of 500 or above, 250 or above for hilly areas. Generally, traffic in most of the cities in India moves slowly, where traffic jams and accidents are very common, but in some cities like Chandigarh, wide roads and less vehicles contribute to lesser traffic. India has very poor records on roads safely. Around 90,000 people die from road accidents every year. At least 13 people die every hour in road accidents in the country. Also in the year 2007 road accidents claimed more than 130,000 lives, overtaking China. A Reader's Digest study of traffic congestion in Asian cities ranked several Indian cities within the top 10 for worst traffic. Buses are an important means of public transport in India. Due to this social significance, urban bus transport is often owned and operated by public agencies, and most state governments operate bus services through a state road transport corporation. These corporations have proven extremely useful in connecting villages and towns across the country. Alongside the public companies there are many private bus fleets. 2012, there were 131,800 publicly owned buses in India but 1,544,700 buses owned by private companies. However, the share of buses is negligible in most Indian cities as compared to personalized vehicles, and two-wheelers and cars account for more than 80% off the vehicle population in most large cities. Many Indian states government have their own fleet of buses which are run under their state transport department. Some of the top bus fleet are as follows. Bus Rapid Transit Systems, BRTS exist in several cities of the country. Buses take up over 90% of public transport in Indian cities, and serve as an important mode of transport. Services are mostly run by state government-owned transport corporations. In 1990s all government state transport corporations have introduced various facilities like low-floor buses for the disabled and air-conditioned buses to attract private car owners to help decongest road stop the Ahmedabad Bus Rapid Transport System. In 2010 won the prestigious Sustainable Transport Award from the Transportation Research Board in Washington. Rainbow BRTS in Pune is the first BRTS system in the country. Mumbai introduced air-conditioned buses in 1998. Bangalore was the first city in India to introduce Volvo B7 Rural Intracity buses in India in January 2005. Absurd is the first transport corporation to introduce night service, online reservation, to nationalize passenger road transport services in the country, 1932, to introduce long-distance night express services and AC sleeper, high-tech, 
Metroliner, Intercity Services and Metro Express, Depot Computerization, 1986, to appoint Safety Commissioner for Improving the Safety of Passengers Bangalore as the first Indian city to have an air-conditioned bus stop, located near Cobbin Park. It was built by Airtel. The city of Chennai houses one of Asia's largest bus terminus, the Chennai Mofusil Bus Terminus. Motorized two-wheeler vehicles like scooters, motorcycles and mopeds are very popular mode of transport due to their fuel efficiency and ease of use in congested roads or streets. The number of two-wheelers sold is several times that of cars. There were 47.5 million powered two-wheelers in India in 2003 compared with just 8.6 million cars. Manufacture of motorcycles in India started when Royal Enfield began assembly in its plant in Chennai in 1948. Royal Enfield, an iconic brand name in the country, manufactures different variants of the British Bullet Motorcycle which is a classic motorcycle that is still in production. Hero Moto Core, formerly Hero Honda, Honda, Bajaj Auto, Yamaha, TV's Motors and Mahindra two-wheelers are the largest two-wheeler companies in terms of market share. Manufacture of scooters in India started when Automobile Products of India, API, set up at Mumbai and incorporated in 1949 began assembling Inochendi built Lambretta scooters in India. They eventually acquired license for the Lee 150 series model, of which they began full-fledged production from the early 60s inwards. In 1972, Scooters India Limited, SIL, a state-run enterprise based in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, bought the entire manufacturing rights of the last Inochendi Lambretta model. API has infrastructural facilities at Mumbai, Aurangabad, and Chennai but has been non-operational since 2002. Sil stopped producing scooters in 1998. Motorcycles and scooters can be rented in many cities, Wicked Ride, Metro Bikes and many other companies are working with state governments to solve last-mile connectivity problems with mass transit solutions. Wearing protective headgear is mandatory for both the rider and the pillion rider in most cities. Private automobiles account for 30% of the total transport demand in urban areas of India. An average of 963 new private vehicles are registered every day in Delhi alone. The number of automobiles produced in India rose from 6.3 million in 2002-03 to 11 million, 11.2 million, in 2008-09. There is substantial variation among different cities and states in terms of dependence on private cars. Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi and Kolkata have 185,127. 157 and 140 cars per 1,000 people respectively. This reflects different levels of urban density and varied qualities of public transport infrastructure. Nationwide, India still has a very low rate of car ownership. When comparing car ownership between BRIC developing countries, it is on a par with China, and exceeded by Brazil and Russia. Compact cars, especially hatchbacks predominate due to affordability, fuel efficiency, congestion, and lack of parking space in most cities. Chennai is known as the Detroit of India for its automobile industry. Maruti, Hyundai, and Tata Motors are the most popular brands in the order of their market share. The ambassador once had a monopoly but is now a Nikon of pre liberalization India, and is still used by taxi companies. Maruti 800, launched in 1984, created the first revolution in the Indian auto sector because of its low pricing. It had the highest market share until 2004 when it was overtaken by other low-cost models from Maruti such as the Alto and the Wagon R, the Indica from Tata Motors and the Santro from Hyundai. Over the 20-year period since its introduction, about 2.4 million units of the Maruti 800 have been sold. However, with the launch of the Tata Nano, the least expensive production car in the world, Maruti 800 lost its popularity. India is also known for a variety of indigenous vehicles made in villages out of simple motors and vehicle spare parts. A few of these innovations are the Jagad, Maruta, Chakda, Pietarita, and the Fame. In the city of Bangalore, Radio 1 and the Bangalore Traffic Police launched a carpooling drive which has involved celebrities such as Robin Utapa and Rahul Dravid encouraging the public to carpool. The initiative got a good response, and by the end of May 2009, 10,000 people are said to have carpooled in the city. There have been efforts to improve the energy efficiency of transport systems in Indian cities, including by introducing performance standards for private automobiles or by banning particularly polluting older cars. The city of Kolkata, for example, passed a law in 2009 tense phasing out vehicles over 15 years old with the purpose of reducing air pollution in the city. However, the distributional effects were mixed. 
On the one hand, poorer urban residents are more likely to see public health improvements from better air quality, since they are more likely to live in polluted areas and work outdoors than richer urban residents. On the other hand, drivers of such vehicles suffered from losing their livelihoods as a result of this environmental regulation. The first utility vehicle in India was manufactured by Mahindra. It was a copy of the original Jeep and was manufactured under license. The vehicle was an instant hit and made Mahindra one of the top companies in India. The Indian Army and police extensively use Mahindra vehicles along with Maruti Gypsies for transporting personnel and equipment. Tata Motors, the automobile manufacturing arm of the Tata Group, launched its first utility vehicle, the Tata Sumo, in 1994. The Sumo, owing to its then modern design, captured a 31% share of the market within two years. The Tempo tracks from Force Motors till recently was ruling the rural areas. Sports utility vehicles now form a sizable part of the passenger vehicle market. Models from Tata, Honda, Hyundai, Ford, Chevrolet and other brands are available. Most of the taxi cabs in India are either Premier Padmini or Hindustan Ambassador cars. However, with app-based taxi services like Uber coming to India as well as homegrown Indian app-based taxi services like Ola coming to the fore, Taxi cabs now include sedans, SUVs and even motorcycle taxis. Depending on the city slash state, taxis can either be hailed or hired from taxi stands. In cities such as Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad, and Ahmedabad, taxis need to be hired over phone, whereas in cities like Kolkata and Mumbai, taxis can be hailed on the street. According to Government of India regulations, all taxis are required to have a fare meter installed. There are additional surcharges for luggage, late night rides and toll taxes are to be paid by the passenger. Since 2006, radio taxis have become increasingly popular with the public due to reasons of safety and convenience. In cities and localities where taxis are expensive or do not ply as per the government or municipal regulated fares, people use share taxis. These are normal taxis which carry one or more passengers traveling to destinations either on one route to the final destination or near the final destination. The passengers are charged according to the number of people with different destinations. The city of Mumbai will soon be the first city in India to have an in taxi magazine titled Mumbai which will be issued to taxis which are part of the Mumbai Taxi Men's Union. The magazine debuted on July 13, 2009. In Kolkata, there are many no-refusal taxi available with white and blue in color. An auto is a three-wheeler vehicle for hire that does not have doors and is generally characterized by a small cabin for the driver in the front and a seat for passengers in the rear. Generally it is painted in yellow, green or black color and has a black, yellow or green canopy on the top but designs vary considerably from Placido Place. The color of the auto rickshaw is also determined by the fuel that it is powered by, for example Agartala, Ahmedabad, Mumbai and Delhi have green or black autos indicating the use of compressed natural gas, whereas the autos of Kolkata, Bangalore, Hyderabad have green autos indicating the use of LPG. In Mumbai and other metropolitan cities, Autos or rickshaws as they are popularly known have regulated metered fares. A recent law prohibits auto rickshaw drivers from charging more than the specified fare, or charging night fare before midnight, and also prohibits the driver from refusing to go to a particular location. Mumbai and Kolkata are also the only two cities which prohibit auto rickshaws from entering a certain part of the city, in these cases being South Mumbai and certain parts of downtown Kolkata. However, in cities like Chennai, it is common to see auto rickshaw drivers demand more than the specified fare and refuse to use fare meter. Airports and railway stations at many cities such as Howrah, Chennai and Bangalore provide a facility of prepaid auto booths, where the passenger pays a fixed fare as set by the authorities for various locations. Electric rickshaw is new popular means of transport, rapidly growing in number in India, due to low running and initial cost. Other economic and environment benefits, these vehicles are becoming popular in India. E-rickshaws are made in fiberglass or metal body, powered by a BLDC electric motor with max power 2000 W and speed 25 km per hour. Countrywide rail services in India, are provided by the state-run Indian Railways under the supervision of the Ministry of Railways. IR is divided into 17 zones including the Kolkata Metro Railway. The IR are further subdivided into 67 divisions, each having a divisional headquarters. The railway network traverses through the length and breadth of the country, covering more than 7,000 stations over a total route length of more than Amtrak length of about. 
about or 34% of the route kilometer was electrified as on March 31, 2012. IR provides an important mode of transport in India, transporting over 18 million passengers and more than 2 million tons of freight daily across one of the largest and busiest rail networks in the world. IR is the world's largest commercial or utility employer, with more than 1.4 million employees. As to rolling stock, IR owns over 200,000 freight, wagons, 50,000 coaches and 8,000 locomotives. It also owns locomotive and coach production facilities. It operates both long-distance and suburban rail systems on a network of broad gate. The IR runs a number of special types of services which are given higher priority. The Rajdhani trains introduced in 1969 provides connectivity between the national capital, Delhi and capitals of the states. On the other hand, Shatabdi Express provides connectivity between centers of tourism, pilgrimage or business. The Shatabdi Express trains run over short to medium distances and do not have sleepers while the Rajdhani Expresses run over longer distances and have only sleeping accommodation. Both series of trains have a maximum permissible speed of 110 to 140 km per hour, 81 to 87 miles per hour, but average speed off less than 100 km per hour the Duranto Express, without any commercial stop between the origin and the destination but with a few technical stops for crew change and food intake, and Garib Rath's Express that provide cheap no-frill air-conditioned rail travel. Besides, the IR also operates a number of luxury trains which cater to various tourist circuits. For instance, the Palace on Wheels serves the Rajasthan circuit and the Golden Chariot serves the Karnataka and Goa circuits. There are two UNESCO World Heritage Sites on IR, the Katrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus and the Mountain Railways of India. The latter consists of three separate railway lines located in different parts of India, the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway, a narrow-gauge railway in Lesser Himalayas in West Bengal, the Nilgiri Mountain Railway. Iraq Railway in the Nilgiri Hills in Tamil Nadu and the Kalka Shimla Railway, a narrow gauge railway in the Siwalik Hills in Himachal Pradesh. In India, freight, goods, trains can carry standard containers double stacked on flatbed wagons with normal axle load of about 22 tons and do not require special low bed wagons unlike in other countries that have, relatively narrow, standard gauge. They carry almost 4,000 tons per rake which is almost twice easy load a normal goods train can haul. Some double-stack container freight trains on the route through Rewari Station also carry high-cube containers that are 2,896 mm, 9 feet 6 inch, high, higher than standard containers that are generally 8 feet or 2.438 mm high, on special low-well wagons owned by private clients. Some private logistics operators have built container storage yards north of Rewari near Garhi Harsaru for this purpose. In 1999, the Konkan Railway Corporation introduced the Roll-On Roll-Off, RORO, service, a unique road rail synergy system, on the section between Kalad and Maharashtra and Varna in Goa, which was extended up to Sarithkal in Karnataka in 2004. The RORO service, the first of its kind in India, allowed trucks to be transported on flatbed trailers. It was highly popular carrying about trucks and bringing in about 740 million worth of earnings to the corporation till 2007. India does not have any railways classified as high-speed rail, HSR, which have operational speeds in excess of. The fastest train in India is the Gadaman Express with a top speed of, which runs between Delhi and Agra. In 2018, a new train stock was made in Chennai called T18 which is set to replace the Shatabdi Express. Prior to the 2014 general election, the two major national parties, Bharatiya Janata Party and Indian National Congress, pledged to introduce high-speed rail. The incorporated pledge to connect all of India's million-plus cities by high-speed rail, whereas BJP, which won the election, promised to build the Diamond Quadrilateral Project, which would connect the cities of Chennai, Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai via high-speed rail. This project was approved as a priority for the new government in the incoming Prime Minister's speech. Construction of one kilometer of high-speed railway track will cost, which is 10 to 14 times higher than the construction of standard railway. Indian government approved the choice of Japan to build India's first high-speed railway. The planned rail would run some between Mumbai and the western city of Ahmedabad, at a top speed of. Under the proposal, Construction is expected to begin in 2017 and be completed in 2023. It would cost about and be financed by a low interest loan from Japan. 
India will use the wheel-based 300 km per hour HSR technology, instead of new maglev 600 km per hour technology of the Japan used in Chuoshin Kansan. India is expected to have its HSR line operational from 2025 onwards, once the safety checks are completed. Rail links between India and neighboring countries are not well developed. Two trains operate to Pakistan, the Samjuta Express between Delhi and Lahore, and the Thar Express between Jodhpur and Karachi. Bangladesh is connected by a bi-weekly train, the Maitri Express that runs from Kolkata to Dhaka. Two rail links to Nepal exist, passenger services between Jainagar and Bijalpura, and freight services between Raksal and Burganj. Indian and Bangladeshi governments will start work late by December or early by January 2015 on a new rail link to ease surface transport. India will build the 15 km railway tracks linking Tripura's capital Agartala with Bangladesh's southeastern city of Akora, an important railway junction connected to Chittagong port, resource rich Silhad and Dhaka. An agreement to implement the railway project was signed between India and Bangladesh in January 2010. Total cost of the proposed project is estimated at 252 crore rupees. The Indian Railway Construction Company, Irkon, would lay the new railway tracks on both sides of the border. Of the 15 km rail line, 5 km of tracks fall in the Indian territory. The NFR is now laying tracks to connect Tripura's southernmost border town, Sabrum, 135 km south of here. From Sabrum, the Chittagong International Seaport is just 72 kilometers. No rail link exists with Myanmar but a railway line is to be built through from Jerobam, in Manipur, to Tama through Impul and Moray. The construction of this missing link, as per the feasibility study conducted by the Ministry of External Affairs through Rights Limited, is estimated to cost. An 18 km railway link with Bhutan is being constructed from Hashimara in West Bengal to Tarabari in Bhutan. No rail link exists with either China or Sri Lanka. The Mumbai Suburban Railway is the first rail system in India which began services in Mumbai in 1853, transports 6.3 million passengers daily and has the highest passenger density in the world. The Kolkata Suburban Railway was established in Kolkata in 1854. The operational suburban rail systems in India are in Mumbai Suburban Railway, Kolkata Suburban Railway, Lucknow Kanpur Suburban Railway, Chennai Suburban Railway, Delhi Suburban Railway, Pune Suburban Railway, Hyderabad Multimodal Transport System, Barabanki Lucknow Suburban Railway and Karwar Railway Division. Other planned systems are Bengaluru Commuter Rail, Ahmedabad Suburban Railway, and Kwambatore Suburban Railway. The first modern rapid transit in India is the Kolkata Metro and its Vert Modern. The Metro started its operations in 1984, this is also the 17th zone of the IR. The Delhi Metro in New Delhi is India's second conventional metro and began operations in 2002. The Nama Metro in Bangalore is India's third operational rapid transit and began operations in 2011. The operational systems are Kolkata Metro, Delhi Metro, Nama Metro. Rapid Metro, Mumbai Metro, Jaipur Metro, Chennai Metro, Kochi Metro, Lucknow Metro, and Hyderabad Metro. The planned systems are Noida Metro, Ghaziabad Metro, Navi Mumbai Metro, Nagpur Metro, Metro Link Express for Gandhi Nagar and Ahmedabad, Varanasi Metro, Kanpur Metro, Bareilly Metro, Pune Metro, Vijayawada Metro, Patna Metro, Merut Metro, Guwahati Metro, Chandigarh Metro, Bhopal Metro, Cozy Kode Light Metro, Indore Metro, Tiruvananthapuram Light Metro, Agra Metro, Kwambatur Metro, Visakhapatnam Metro, Dehradun Metro, Surat Metro, Srinagar Metro, Greater Gwalior Metro, Jabalpur Metro, and Greater Nashik Metro. Currently, rapid transit are under construction or in planning in several major cities of India and will be opened shortly. Monorail is generally considered as feeder system for the metro trains in India. The Mumbai monorail, which started in 2014, is the first operational monorail network in India, excluding the Skybus Metro, since the Patiala State Monorail Trainways closed in 1927. Other planned systems are Chennai Monorail, Kolkata Monorail, Allahabad Monorail, Bengaluru Monorail, Delhi Monorail, Indore Monorail, Kanpur Monorail. Navi Mumbai Monorail, Patna Monorail, Pune Monorail, Ahmedabad Monorail, Isal Monorail, Bhubaneswar Monorail, Jodhpur Monorail, Kota Monorail, 
Nagpur Monorail, and Nashik Monorail. Like Monorail, Light Rail is also considered as a feeder system for the metro systems. The plan systems are Kolkata Light Rail Transit and Delhi Light Rail Transit. In addition to trains, trams were introduced in many cities in late 19th century, though almost all of these were phased out. The trams in Kolkata is currently the only tram system in the country. The Calcutta Tramways Company is in the process of upgrading the existing tramway network at a cost of. Directorate General of Civil Aviation is the national regulatory body for the aviation industry. It is controlled by the Ministry of Civil Aviation. The ministry also controls aviation related autonomous organizations like the Airports Authority of India, AAI, Bureau of Civil Aviation Security, BCAS. Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Urine Academy and public sector undertakings including Air India, Pa One Hans Helicopters Limited, and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Air India is India's national flag carrier after merging with Indian Airline in 2011 and plays a major role in connecting India with the rest of the world. Indigo, Jet Airways, Air India, SpiceJet, and GoAir are the major carriers in order of their market share. These airlines connect more than 80 cities across and beyond also operate overseas routes after the liberalization of Indian aviation. Several other foreign airlines connect Indian cities with other major cities across the globe. However, a large section of country's air transport potential remains untapped, even though the Mumbai-Delhi Air Corridor was ranked 10th by Amadeus in 2012 among the world's busiest routes. While there are 346 civilian airfields in India, 253 with paved runways and 93 with unpaved runways, only 132 were classified as airports as of November 2014. Of these, Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi is the busiest in the country. The operations of the major airports in India have been privatized over the past five years and this has resulted in better equipped and cleaner airports. The terminals have either been refurbished or expanded. India also has 33 ghost airports, which were built in an effort to make air travel more accessible for those in remote regions but are now non-operational due to a lack of demand. The Jaisalmer Airport in Rajasthan, for example, was completed in 2013 and was expected to host 300,000 passengers a year but has sighed to see any commercial flights take off. Despite the number of non-operational airports, India is currently planning on constructing another 200 low-cost airports over the next 20 years. As of 2013, there are 45 heliports in India. India also has the world's highest helipad at the Sakhan Glacier at a height of 6,400 meters, 21,000 feet, above mean sea level. Pa One Hans Helicopters Limited is a public sector company that provides helicopter services to ONGC to its offshore locations, and also to various state governments in India, particularly in northeast India. India has a coastline of, and thus ports are the main centers of trade. India also has an extensive network of inland waterways. In India about 95% of the foreign trade by quantity and 70% by value takes place through the ports. Mumbai Port and JNPT Navi Mumbai, handles 70% of maritime trade in India. There are 12 major ports, Navi Mumbai, Mumbai, Kochi, Kolkata, including Haldia, Paradip, Visakhapatnam, Inor. Chennai, Tutikoran, New Mangaluru, Mormugao, and Kandla. Other than these, there are 187 minor and intermediate ports, 43 of which handle cargo. Maritime transportation in India is managed by the Shipping Corporation of India, a government-owned company that also manages offshore and other marinette transport infrastructure in the country. It owns and operates about 35% of Indian tonnage and operates in practically all areas of shipping business servicing both national and international trades. The only Indian state with three ports is Tamil Nadu, the Arunur, Chennai, and Tutikoran. It has a fleet of 79 ships of 2,750,000 GT, 4.8 million DWT, and also manages 53 research, survey and support vessels of 120,000 GT. 060,000 DWT, on behalf of various government departments and other organizations. Personnel are trained at the Maritime Training Institute in Mumbai, a branch of the World Maritime University, which was set up in 1987. The corporation also operates in Malta and Iran through joint ventures. The distinction between major and minor ports is not based on the amount of cargo handled. The major ports are managed by port trusts, which are regulated by the central government. 
They come under the purview of the Major Port Trusts Act, 1963. The minor ports are regulated by the respective state governments and many of these ports are private ports or captive ports. The total amount of traffic handled at the major ports in 2005 to 2006 was 382.33 mounds. India has an extensive network of inland waterways in the form of rivers, canals, backwaters and creeks. The total navigable length is, out of which about of river and of canals can be used by mechanized crafts. Freight transport by waterways is highly underutilized in India compared to other large countries. The total cargo moved by inland waterways is just 0.15% of the total inland traffic in India, compared to the corresponding figures of 20% for Germany and 32% for Bangladesh. Cargo that is transported in an organized manner is confined to a few waterways in Goa, West Bengal, Assam, and Kerala. The Inland Waterways Authority of India, IWAI, is the statutory authority in charge of the waterways in India. It does the function of building the necessary infrastructure in these waterways, surveying the economic feasibility of new projects and also administration and regulation. The following waterways have been declared as national waterways. Oil and gas industry in India imports 82% of its oil needs and aims to bring that down to 67% by 2022 by replacing it with local exploration, renewable energy and indigenous ethanol fuel, c. January 2018. Logistics in India ranking moved up to 35th place in 2016 from 54th in 2014 on World Bank's Global Logistics Performance Index. Government strategy aims to raise the share of global trade in India's GDP, 2.7 trillion US dollars in FI 2017-18 to 40%, including half of it, 20% of GDP, from exports c. January 2018. Cost of logistics in India is 14% of GDP, which is higher than the developed nations, and government reforms aim to bring it down to 10% of GDP 2022, c. January 2018. Ministry of Commerce and Industry has created a new dedicated centralized logistics division in collaboration with Singapore and Japan to handle the logistics which was earlier handled by several different ministries, such railways, roads, shipping and aviation. To boot exports, each state will have exports and logistic policy and nodal officers will be appointed at district level, see. January 2018. There are 64 transactions and 37 government agencies in the end-to-end -end production to export process. To further improve the ranking, improve speed of logistics, ease of doing business and reduce the cost of logistics, India is creating a common online integrated logistics e-marketplace portal that will cover all transactions in production and export, connect buyers with logistics service providers and government agencies such as the Customs Department IceGate system, Port Community Systems, Sea and Airport Terminals, Shipping Lines, Railways, etc. C. January 2018 as part of the 125 billion US dollars port led development project Sagarmala, government will define the regulatory framework for the Indian logistics operational standards by benchmarking India's 300 dry ports logistics parks, inland container depots or ICDs, to the top 10 logistics international best practices nations to boost exports, remove supply chain bottlenecks, reduce transaction costs, optimize logistics mix, set up new hub and spoke dry ports. See. January 2018. To reduce the logistics costs by 10% and CO2 emissions by 12%, the government is also developing 35 new multimodal logistics parks, MMLPs on 36 ring roads, which will facilitate 50% of the freight moved in India. Land has been earmarked and pre-feasibility study is underway for six of these MMLPs c. May 2017. Confederation of Indian Industry, CII and government will organize an annual national logistics convention. Major supply chain solution providers include Container Corporation of India and Transport Corporation of India, and Magazine Logistics Management India Magazine is one of the industry publication. The national capital New Delhi has one of the largest CNG-based transport systems as a part of the drive to bring down pollution. In spite of these efforts it remains the largest contributor to the greenhouse gas emissions in the city. The CNG bus manufacturers in India are Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors, Swaraj Mazda, and Hindustan Motors. In 1998, the Supreme Court of India published a directive that specified the date of April 2001 as deadline to replace or convert all buses, three-wheelers and taxis in Delhi to compressed natural gas. 
The Karnataka State Road Transport Corporation was the first state transport undertaking in India to utilize biofuels and ethanol blended fuels. KSRTC took an initiative to do research in alternative fuel forms by experimenting with various alternatives, blending diesel with biofuels such as hanj, palm, sunflower, groundnut, coconut, and sesame. In 2009, the corporation decided to promote the use of biofuel buses. In 2017, the government announced that by 2030, only electric vehicles would be sold in the country. It also announced that by 2022 all trains would be electric trains. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.